the best thing that you can do if you've had a very unpleasant experience with a narcissist or another toxic person is to use that experience as something to fuel you to better yourself going forwards. If you found yourself trying to be too, too easygoing, maybe too compromising, too, too helpful, and somebody took advantage of your good nature, then it's, it's really tough to accept that people take advantage of your positive traits and then use it against you. They use it to manipulate you. They use it to, to psychologically and emotionally abuse you. They use it to get supply for selfish purposes and you end up getting the bad end of the stick and you feel like somebody just put their hand inside your soul and just kind of ripped it apart. It's that kind of feeling when somebody does that to you, when you only had good intentions, it's really hard to accept if it's, if it's like the first time it's happened to you and you're not really familiar with this, this kind of concept and these types of personalities yet. It's really hard to accept that people can do that to you because it just doesn't feel like it's right. But putting all that negative experience, that kind of victimizing self-victimizing mindset because somebody took advantage of you and the anger, putting all that aside, you've now learned something. You've learned that there's a certain category of personas out there that are predatorial in a sense. They try to pick up on people who have certain traits and openings in themselves that, you know, the narcissist can, can use to get a foothold in you, and then they'll basically use you for their own purposes. It's not that they're trying to harm you. When, when people use and abuse you in that way, they're not trying to harm you. They're not trying to make you feel bad. They're just trying to get their own relief. They're just trying to achieve their own personal agenda. And they simply have no regard for you. And they'll just use you up. And if, and if you end up suffering because of it, they don't care. It's not that they want you to be harmed. It's just that they don't, they don't care enough one way or the other. It just so happens that when people use you to their advantage fully without consideration, without empathy towards you and the impact it has on you, it causes a lot of suffering in you. But that's not usually the primary goal of the people. The primary goal of the people is not usually to inflict harm on you, but rather to get the supply they need from you. So they basically just suck you dry of all, all the good things you have in you, all the good traits, the good energy, the the giving nature, the, the wanting to be helpful nature, the wanting to be compromising nature, you know, the people pleasing, any combination of those things that you might have, they'll take it for what, they'll, they'll take anything that you might be willing to give. But again, putting all that aside, you now have that kind of understanding, that knowledge that certain people out there are capable of doing that to you. And you have the knowledge that people do that, not because they want to harm you, but because they are in their own pain. They are in their own suffering and they don't know how to deal with it. They don't know how to regulate their emotions. They don't know how to regulate their well-being. And it just so happens when they cause harm on other people and they feel in control of other people and can manipulate people to their advantage, it just makes them feel better, more in control of themselves and more comfortable in their skin. It's all very temporary, so they're doing these things all the time, but it just it just is what it is. But once you understand that people like that exist and once you've you've had one, two or three people kind of use you in very unpleasant ways. Then all of that anger, all that frustration, all that that feeling of unfairness and injustice that people can do that to you. It's your job to rechannel that, to rechannel all that aggravating energy into something which is helpful to you, which is good to you. Which is you being able to maintain your composure even in in a world where a lot of people don't have your best interest in mind. You being able to build yourself up where you know how to, where you won't necessarily, you don't want to get rid of all your, all your positive traits. Like if you're a nice person, you like to see other people doing well, you like to help, you don't want to get rid of all that. But you have to know when to switch it off. You cannot give all your good stuff away for free indiscriminately. That's the key. You don't give all your positive traits and all your good energy away indiscriminately. 
Because if you do it indiscriminately, the predators will, will sense that. And then they will be the ones who will be the most honed in on you because they need your good energy more than most. And they'll do what they can, whether it's playing the victim card, whether it's manipulating you into falling in love with them, whether it's just being super dramatic and super, you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's infinite things they can do to kind of get you in their orbit so that they can then extract all the good stuff from you. That's why you, you can't just give away everything good about yourself indiscriminately. You have to learn through the experience of having dealt with toxic people in the past that all all that learning is something you want to rechannel into changing yourself. And one thing that you want to be able to change about yourself is being able to, to, to play both sides of the coin, where you know how to switch on your good nature when you're around your family, friends, and people who you really enjoy. But when your radar picks up that there are very toxic people or predators around just looking for a next target, you need to learn how to switch that off. And it takes a lot of practice because it's not in your nature, most likely. If you've been a target of narcissists, narcissists in the past for a long time, most likely it's not in your nature to switch off your good stuff to people. You probably were an indiscriminate giver. But that's, that's akin to emotional and psychic suicide because people will just take all that out. So you have to... You have to... to to consider yourself in the equation you know you are important too your well-being is important too if you're trying to be indiscriminately good you're going to invite a few predators in your time to your life they're going to take you so down so far you're not going to be able to give good stuff to the other people who actually deserve it you know so even if you want to help people it's in your interest to be able to switch it off so that the, the ones who deserve it and through your wisdom in life experience, you know that there are certain people who you might want to give it to who, who aren't the narcissistic, toxic type, then you still have it available for them. But then when you're in a, in a setting, whether it's at work, whether it's with your family, whether it's with friends, whether it's just walking around, and you notice that there are certain people who just by you picking up on their energy, you're picking up on red flags. You know, these people have that kind of predatorial type stance. You can kind of switch yourself off or... Just make sure you have stronger bar barriers in place so that you're not giving these people a chance to get a foothold into your into your personal energy, your personal space. It's about keeping them at a safe distance. Not just physically, that too, but emotionally. Your, your, your personal energy space, you have to protect that. And if you do protect that and you do maintain your composure and you do prevent these people from coming in, then you have so much more of yourself that you can give to the people who you really want and you really care about. I mean, I, I do understand that sometimes it's a bit frustrating when you can't really be your full self all the time. Because if you're being your full, best, relaxed, chilled, helpful, loving self all the time, then it's almost like every fifth or every, or every tenth or every twentieth person kind of out there would just try to rip you to pieces through their own ways, through their own subtle ways. They'll try to take you down because, you know, if you're if you're shining a bright light, some people don't know how to coexist with that because they're in dark places. And if you're shining too much of a bright light around certain people and you're really shining it on them, then they'll have to try to put your light out. That's just what certain people do. They like putting your light out, they need to extinguish you, and then they feel better. People who live in the dark, they want to take everybody else around them in the darkness too. So the best you can do is when you know there are certain people who are in the dark, certain narcissistic types around you, don't let them know what's going on. Don't really let them know what's going on with you one way or another. If you're going to shine your bright light, let it shine a little bit, and then go into your kind of neutral zone and let it go off. Maybe you can make a comment here or there, coming across slightly frustrated, and then you're upbeat again. But just don't really let them really see what's going on with you. Um, you're, you're doing your own thing. And you're not going to allow your mood or whatnot to be dictated by them and by what they want. Because ultimately, narcissists and people in the dark zone, they want to be able to dictate how you feel and control how you feel. First and foremost, if they see you in a really high-flying place, 
with a bright, a bright shining light, they're going to want to take you down. That's the first thing. And then they're going to want to be able to control you and manipulate you to their advantage. Until they've taken everything good you have to offer. So, again, having experience with these, having experienced certain encounters with these people, it's your job to know um, when to switch off certain things about yourself so you're not inviting, inviting the predators for all the yumminess that, you know, that they'll see within you. And just kind of keeping those strong boundaries in place. And that's what you should do when you've every time you encounter a toxic person in your life and you've experienced something unpleasant, you should rechannel rechannel the energy into changing things about yourself to suit you in the long run. You shouldn't change yourself to be miserable. No. Yeah, sometimes it's better to kind of tone yourself down, but reach that point in your mind where you can see that as being to your benefit. If you can convince yourself that you're doing it for the right reasons and not the wrong reasons, then you won't be you won't be so upset anymore. You'll actually you know, the whole, the bigger picture will kind of make sense. And you'll accept it for being some, for what it is. And you might even accept it as being something good for you. So just keep that in mind.